manners are not really a big thing anymore. I don't know why we don't think that they're a big thing anymore. I mean, eventually somebody's going to disrespect your mother or your grandmother. I don't know why you don't think that this bad manners isn't going to affect you. If I have manners, you should have manners. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Where we grew up, you had to show respect. Because if you didn't show respect, somebody would disrespect you hard. Where we grew up, there was a motto in Brooklyn, get them before they get you. How can you be nice when you grow up in Brooklyn when the first phrase you hear every morning in Brooklyn is, what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> wait, wait, and that was my mother at breakfast. <laughs> Respect was important where I grew up. Respect was very, very important because where I grew up, maybe what happens to people is they grew up in a homogeneous neighborhood where everybody's Catholic or everybody's Protestant or everybody's white. But where we grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm gonna say we tonight, there were black people and Jewish people and Irish people and Italian. There were people that were not like you. So you didn't have a comfort zone. You'll find that people, when they all live in one homogeneous group, they become powerful. This is where I come every day. This is where it started on March 31st. On March 31st, there were protesters and I decided to put it on Facebook Live to let people see because I was hoping the protests would be peaceful. I wanted to show people that the protesters were peaceful and I was, if they weren't peaceful, well then you would see that. And sure enough, they were peaceful. 12th Street and Broadway down there. And after a while, there were no protesters. And I was telling people, hey, I was going live, and I was going, hey, there's really nothing to see today. So I started making a few jokes, because I'm a comedian. And I said, listen, I wouldn't be joking if something serious was going on. And people started to enjoy that. And I stayed in the house 51 days. I did not leave my house for 51 days. I just came up on this roof. Then I decided after 51 days to go down and walk in the street. And I, I started filming protesters. Some of the people were not, were former New Yorkers and they said, oh, it's so great. Like I went to Little Italy and they said, I miss Little Italy. And people started writing me, I miss New York and you're making me feel better. And then I just started telling people every day that I wanted to turn up their inner light that the goodness that's in everyone, that I wanted to turn up their inner light and I wanted to bring happiness to them. And I started even showing sunsets to people. I just wanted to bring people positive images and I wanted to bring people hope. And also I wanted to have company because I've been socially distancing. I'm a comedian. I'm so used to going on stage every night. And then it started turning into a neighborhood. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Flatbush. I'm a public school kid. We started out hanging out with each other, and my intention was to make my intention was to make people feel better about themselves. Well, the people started making me feel better about me. And then an old-time friend of mine from Brooklyn goes, "Why are you on the roof every day making these videos?" I started to realize that people were hating on New York City. I went to PS217. I always say that I went to a maximum security junior high school Ditmas. I rode the D train in the 70s. I believe in New York. The D train would go from like Macy's all the way down to Coney Island. And when I was going to school in the 1970s, it was, it was so dangerous on that train. I didn't just feel that, do you understand that? I didn't just feel they were attacking New York City. They were attacking me. It was personal. There are millions and millions of people that can't flee. They can't afford to run away. And there's millions and millions. These are real people that are here right now, like me. And I... <laughs>
You're not giving up, are you? Are you filming? You know, how are we gonna survive the coronavirus? How do we survive anything in life if we don't stay motivated and positive? For a lot of people, that's not a reality. But that's what I do, okay? I'm not a political comedian. I'm not an economist. My role, I believe my role is to motivate people and keep their spirits up. Because when your spirits are up, you, you'll fight back. You, 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 can't just, you can't just give up in life. People in the Holocaust, they didn't give up. They don't give up. Uh, athletes don't give up. You could be down 20 points. Tom Brady in the Super Bowl came back. I, I, what's going on here? Where's the American spirit? It's been squashed. Yeah. What type of team is this where we shit on each other? So my role is to keep people positive. To be almost like a cheerleader. That's what I'm doing. Somebody else handle the economy. I'm gonna handle the American spirit. 10 years ago, I began to talk about all the heat I was seeing in America. It did come to fruition, Tommy. You gotta say it, because if I say it, it'll look like I'm trying to promote myself. I can prove it. Yeah, you can prove it. You've got the videos, right? Remember we did Martin Luther King Day? I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, but you have to be proud of who you are. So I used the stereotypes to encourage, to break the ice, to encourage people to be proud of who they are. You think you're gonna play ball in the streets and not know black people, not have black friends? You think you're not gonna know Puerto Rican, Dominican people, white people, Irish people, Catholic people? I'm a real New Yorker. They took the package, but they didn't take the heart. The honesty is, I tell ethnic jokes to your face. Other people tell them behind your backs at a country club. I'm honest. I think the future is happening right now. I think the country is having growing pains. Right now in America, New York City is being used as a marketing tool. People use words also to agitate. Treat others as you want other people to treat you. Let's treat each other all with respect. Can we agree on that?